Welcome back. We are still working on the same Maestro project and working directory as earlier, so make sure you have your Maestro underscore intro project open and your working directory set to your course folder. In the previous video, we went through preparing ligands for docking using lig prep, and in this video, we will go through protein preparation, receptor grid generation, and running a docking job. To begin, include the 5 IEY structure in the workspace. Next, click Protein Preparation in the Favorites toolbar to open the Protein Preparation workflow. We will not be doing a deep dive into the protein preparation process here, but thorough structure preparation is an essential step before beginning any modeling project. For more information, we recommend looking at the Protein Preparation Workflow Cheat Sheet and the Introduction to Structure Visualization and Preparation Tutorial. The Protein Preparation Workflow helps address many of the issues inherent to a PDB structure, such as missing hydrogen atoms, missing side chains, missing loops, alternate positions for side chains, and more. This tool is intended to support two main workflows interactive preparation of a single protein, and automated preparations of multiple proteins. Before we start preparing our protein, it would be a good idea to see what kinds of problems there are with our structure so that we can get a sense of how involved the preparation process might be. Navigate to the Diagnostics tab and click Check Workspace Entry. No need to pay attention to the Valences tab as that is just telling you that there are missing hydrogens in the structure. We will fix that in the first step of the preparation process. Move over to the Missing tab. Here, we can see that residue number 206 is missing a heavy atom in its side chain. We will keep that in mind for later. Next, go to the Alternates tab. Frequently, multiple positions can be found in the electron density for larger side chains. If you just intend to use this structure for docking, all we really need to care about are residues in the binding site, since Glide treats the receptor as rigid. If you click on residue 84, you will see it selected in the workspace, and notice that it is located in the binding site, as is residue 132. When that comes up, you may want to compare your structure with other crystal structures, or proceed through the workflow with several structures in parallel with different positions for the side chains. In this case, we are going to use Shift Click to select all of the residues and click Commit in their default positions. Return to the Preparation Workflow tab. Notice that Interactive Mode is off. This implies that an automatic protein preparation will occur from this panel when you click Run. Automatic preparation is preset by the use of toggles that control which stages of the workflow are run in a single job. On the other hand, when interactive mode is on, you may run each preparation step in a step-by-step -step manner and evaluate the results at each stage. You can use these two different modes to help facilitate switching between having a high level of control over the options in a protein preparation and being able to efficiently prepare many proteins in exactly the same way. In general, the default settings here have been found to work well for a wide variety of systems, so we will be performing an automatic preparation. Confirm pre-process, optimize H-bond assignments, and cleanup tasks are all toggled on, indicated by the checkmark beside each option. Once again, see the additional slides in Module 4 the Protein Preparation Workflow Cheat Sheet in Module 5C, and the Introduction to Structure Preparation and Visualization Tutorial in the Bibliography for more information on when to deviate from the defaults. We will start with the pre-process stage. Since we had a missing heavy atom in one of our side chains, we are going to keep Fill in Missing Side Chains checked. If you are truncating the protein or preparing a structure for molecular dynamics, consider capping the termini. Open the More Options dropdown. If you have missing loops under six residues long, then you can also fill these in with Prime here. Prime is Schrodinger's structure refinement application. Just note that any Prime jobs will increase the preparation time. If you have waters in your structure and would like to delete the ones that are a certain distance from your binding site, 
you can delete them here. We are going to check that and keep the default distance. Lastly, make sure that the pH range reflects the correct experimental or physiological conditions of your structure. This pH will be used to generate the protonation and tautomeric states for your HET groups, meaning parts of the structure that are not protein or solvent. Select the main panel to close the options menu. On to the hydrogen bond optimization stage. Since we added hydrogen atoms to our entry during pre-processing, the hydrogen bond assignment section is where we will optimize our hydrogen bond network at a particular pH. This should be the same pH used during the first step of the preparation process and during lig prep. Now, in order to relax our structure a bit and make sure all atoms are in a reasonable location, we are going to run a restrained minimization in the cleanup stage. It is restrained in the sense that the heavy atom RMSD from the original is set to just 0.3 angstroms. You also have the option of deleting waters in this stage. Name the batch job 5IEY underscore prepared and click run. Once the job is completed, a new entry and group titled 5IEY underscore prepared will be added to and included in the entry list. Pause the video here until your job is completed. After the job is done, return to the Diagnostics tab and select Check Workspace Entry to see if any problems have persisted in your prepared crystal structure. Next, we will click on the Substructures tab to dig down into the different components of the structure, including the various chains, het groups, and water molecules. This is where you can delete a chain from your entry if it does not contain the binding site or if you are dealing with a homomultimer before proceeding with docking. The panel is synced with the workspace, so if you click on a water, it will zoom into that water. As we are preparing the structure for docking with Glide, which treats the solvent molecules as part of the rigid receptor structure, we are going to remove all waters that are not critical to binding. However, please note that we are doing this now that our structure minimization step has completed. Deciding which waters to keep and which to remove is always structure and project specific. Since the only water that is critical for binding is HOH1107, which mediates a hydrogen bond between the ligand and aspartate 145, we are going to keep this particular water and use shift click and control click to remove all other waters. The Protein Preparation Workflow Cheat Sheet has more information on how to treat crystal structure waters. You can also remove particular HET groups that are not biologically relevant, such as various crystallographic artifacts. Now we can close the Protein Preparation Workflow panel. We will use this prepared structure to generate a receptor grid. A receptor grid is how Glide, the Schrodinger docking protocol, defines the binding site in which a molecule can be docked. Go to Tasks, search Grid, and choose Receptor Grid Generation. When you open the panel, you will see that there is a banner at the top of the workspace saying, Pick Atom in the Ligand. This is letting you know that you need to select an atom in the ligand in the workspace in order to specify the binding site. Type L to zoom to the ligand and click an atom in the ligand. You will notice that the ligand is now highlighted in green. If you zoom out, you will also see a large purple cube. This cube defines the region in which all docked ligand atoms may bind. If you move over to the Site tab, and click Advanced Settings, you will see another cube in the workspace. This cube is green and smaller than the purple one. This cube defines the region in which the centroid of a docked ligand must be found. You have the option of adjusting these settings, but in this case, we are going to keep the default settings. Click OK. Now, let's go to the Constraints tab. Go to H-Bond Metal, and select the oxygen on the backbone carbonyl for leucine 83. Make sure to have your interactions toggled on to make it easier to find that hydrogen bond interaction. It is worth noting that when you load a receptor grid into the docking panel, 
you will have the option of deciding whether you will actually use those constraints when running your docking calculation. With that in mind, it makes sense to add any constraints you think may be of interest to your receptor grid since you can always decide later on which ones, if any, you would like to use. You can now change the job name to glide grid underscore 5IEY and click Run. This job should take just a few minutes. Unlike the previous jobs you have run, the receptor grid is not added to the entry list. It is just added to your working directory. We will load it from there once we start using the ligand docking panel. Pause the video here until your job is completed. Close the receptor grid generation panel. In the ligand designer panel, which we will introduce later, the receptor grid generation runs automatically on the back end, further simplifying this process. Now that we have our receptor grid created, we can start planning our docking calculation. First, select the lig prep ligands in the entry list. Notice that the selected entries have the titles highlighted in blue. Generally, you would also want to dock your co crystallized ligand as a control to validate your docking model, but we have done that already for you, so we can go ahead and dock just our lig prep outputs. Now, go to Tasks, type Docking, and choose Ligand Docking. Next to File Name, go to Browse, open the Glide Grid underscore 5 IEY folder, select Glide Grid underscore 5 IEY dot zip, and click Open. In the Ligand section of the Ligand Docking panel, Click on Project Table, Selected Entries. Let's go to Settings, where you can see that you can select the precision of the calculation. We will be using the default and recommended standard precision setting. However, there are many settings that can be adjusted depending on your situation. For instance, if you are planning to dock macrocycles, you will want to select Sample Macrocycles using Prime. To learn more about macrocycle modeling, See the link in the bibliography for this module. From here, go to the Constraints tab, where you can see the hydrogen bond constraint that we put in our receptor grid. The validation of docking the cognate ligand showed that we got better results without the constraint, so we are not going to toggle it on. Finally, go to the Output tab. By default, Glide will return only the top ranked pose for each ligand even though many poses are evaluated. If you would like to look at more than one pose, which is recommended when screening a small group of ligands, you can do so here. For our job now, we will keep the default of one. Now you are ready to submit your docking job. Come down to the job name and rename it glide-doc underscore 5 IEY. When you are ready, click Run. This job will take a few minutes. In the Ligand Designer panel, which we will introduce later, the docking workflow is less customizable but considerably more streamlined. Thank you for watching this video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next. See you there!